declaring the winner by knockout and still the undisputed UFC flyweight champion of the world, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. I am here with the winner, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson. First of all, Demetrius, congratulations on one of the most spectacular performances of your career against one of the most dangerous opponents you've ever faced. G give us your thoughts on the knockout. How long did it take for you to get over that? Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, nothing ever goes as planned in this sport, huh? It's just like everything was set up to be so perfect. Like Sacramento, my fight got changed, all my teammates on the card. It's like epic, like Cinderella man story. And then it just like went totally the different way, like drastic change. But, uh, you know, that's life I've dealt with you know, things like that before and, and everything. And, you know, it's just really, you know, cliche, but it's just how you bounce back from it and recover from it. So it you was know, just a test, like kind of testing my faith and my confidence and seeing how well I could bounce back. And, you know, I feel good, you know, tried to put it behind me, but it was definitely tough, you know? I mean, it was such a short, you know, just abrupt ending to the fight. Like I didn't even get to fight, you know? Um, and that was more disappointing after I felt like I felt gypped of like a good fight you know like i think me and demetrius could have put on a really really good high-paced technical amazing fight for 25 minutes keep working keep working <laughs> This process has been a long time getting this uh, third title shot, you know. In a way, it's crazy. It seems like you, you always try to keep a perspective and literally go fight by fight, which even going fight by fight, you're going day by day, hour by hour, practice by practice. So, you know, it's hard for me to sometimes look back because I always just try to be like, you know what, all I can do is my best right now in this practice for this fight. You know, but when you get asked the question, how long has it been? It's been, it's been forever. I mean, I've won since my last title fight. I've won nine out of my last 10 fights. Went through an ACL injury. Was that where I was out 18 months? Um, so, I mean, that right there, you know, gives you a bit of an idea of what that is. And I think that was maybe six years ago since my last title shot. Um, someone took over the belt, someone relinquished the belt, someone got traded. Um, it's been wild, man, but I've just, I feel the main thing is why it doesn't seem long. And I always just kept the faith and the perseverance through the up, through the down. You know, it's obviously easier through the up and through the win, but I just, I don't know, I never, I feel lucky when things work out. You know, because I, I try my hardest every day. Sometimes things work out, sometimes they don't. So when they work out, it's great. But when they don't, to keep the same energy and the same faith and the same belief in yourself and what you're doing, you know, that's, that's where a lot of this was made. I, I just, you know, I looked at ways my career could go through the flyweights almost leaving and you know, Cejudo at, at the time having the double belt, Demetrius getting traded. I didn't know. I looked, I looked at every way the the division and my career could have happened, and I just think I kind of came to peace with everything about it. I was just like, what can I do? I'm doing everything I can, not taking any shortcuts, working my hardest. But at the same time, I never like lost sight of the goal, which is you know to to be the best and go for the title, and. Um, the great thing is I just I kept being me. I didn't try to compromise or do anything out of the ordinary, but work hard and and uh, and win. And uh, and here we are. It's just uh, it's it's a great feeling. Good work, good work. Way to start the week. You guys got anything? You guys got anything? All right, bring it in. Warriors the lead. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Team on three. One, two, three, three. So I I think I 
I help these guys uh, in finding that ability to remain focused and stay consistent. And again, it's different for each fighter. Each fighter has their own motivations. Uh, and that's the key to coaching is, is in individually recognizing that within each fighter um, and pulling that out of those guys, and what's important to them um, and being in tune with them and helping them constantly refocus because we're all victim of that, um, having to refocus and losing focus and having to refocus. And, and that's part of the journey and that's part of the process. And I think that's why Joe's so successful is because he loves the journey, he loves the process. It's, it's not goal fixated, um, it's the everyday journey and you know he loves what he does. I think you gotta do that shit and it gives you a better chance. Nothing's guaranteed. A ton of people wrote a bunch of shit and imagined a bunch of shit and it didn't happen. Right. But like, it, you got to do everything you can yeah. for that chance anyway. Right. You know what I mean? And I, I, I'm a 100% believer in that. I do that every time. I know. That's all I do. And it's and it's it's normal. Eyesight versus mindsight. Bro, it's fucking, it's going down, bro. Love you, kiddo. I love you too, buddy. Get to work. Let's fucking go. Where is Mr. Benavidez is originally from? Originally from Las Cruces, New Mexico is where I was uh, raised. I was actually born in San Antonio, Texas, uh, go Spurs. But uh, you know, I only lived there till I was about five and then I moved to Las Cruces, New Mexico. So that's where I spent, you know, my, that's where I grew up. That's what shaped me. That was, that's my, that's my environment that I'm a product of. And what kind of childhood, and, and you know, what, what we were just talking about, just what, what kind of environment and childhood did you grow up in? Um, you know, if you if you look back at it as an adult, you would think maybe it was a chaotic, you know, childhood, missing, you know, parts, um, for, for better words, just a, a, a tough childhood. But when you're growing up, you, you feel the love around you and not really everything else. Like I grew up with just my mom and my two brothers, um, my dad, um, when we moved from San Antonio, he actually went to prison. So it was just my mom. We lived with my grandma for a long time, but I had like family all around me. You know, my mom, in incredible, um, um, hardest worker. That's where I get like all my work ethic and so many of my good qualities from. But like my grandma, the same, she raised nine kids on her own. Um, and we lived with her for a while. So she was someone I could look up to. Um, but I had like aunts all around, cousins all around. My grandma's house where we lived was kind of like uh, where everyone would congregate, you know, in town, you know, all my cousins and stuff. So I had like family all around me, you know, but um, maybe not just one like father figure or something, but you know, my brothers and um, yeah, it was, a, it was a good time. Like I have no complaints at, at all. Um, it was just a good time, you know, um, like anybody else, you know, we weren't, you know, um, wealthy or whatever, but we had everything we needed. And somehow my mom would still like, even when I was young, I love shoes and she'd always get me the, the coolest shoes I wanted for Christmas. So we didn't, we didn't, we didn't want for much, you know, even though, you know, we lived in like a one bedroom with four of us and, you know, we, we didn't, like I said, we didn't want for much. We'd just go swimming, we'd play. You know, we had everything we needed as, as kids. I think a lot of people that maybe even talk to me, you know, sometimes are just, you know, they're surprised I'm not just talking about fighting or I'm talking about this or, you know, if you follow me on Instagram or anything just dumb like that, like, you know, fighting is like a bonus of my life not the other way around, you know, like, I don't, like, the fighting is not my life, and then, and then, like, oh, I also have, like, a personal life and a wife, like, that's my life, like, life is so much bigger than fighting, you know, the people you can touch, the people you know, and also, the period of time it goes on after. My wife lived in, um, New York before this. Yeah. She, you know, 300 square foot, like a tiny five story walk up. So She's cool. like, she came here because she got a job here and she checked out an apartment, had a pool outside, a tennis court, granite countertops, a fireplace, two bedrooms. And they're like, 
yeah, it's uh, 900 a month, and she's like, I'm gonna cry. She's like, yeah, yeah, she's like the nicest place I've ever stayed in. So Vegas is great for that. 500, yeah. good stuff. Yeah. 500 club. I have to say, I've known him since 2000, 2009 we met. He's always been like that. Like he, Joe's never walked around where he wants people to know him or he's never like tried to get something because of where he is in the rankings in the UFC. Like he's never, he doesn't, I wouldn't say like he holds himself to this level that you see a lot of professional athletes do. And I mean that in like, kind of a cringy way, you know? Like you'll be around athletes and they'll be like, well, I mean, I'm at this store, but do you watch UFC? Yeah, or like, or, or do you watch basketball or whatever it is? And they're trying to get something about who they are. Like Joe's never been like that. So I think that's that like carries over to all aspects of his life. Make no mistake, he wakes up before his alarm, ready to go conquer the day, conquer his workout, like, and and not just like get by, but Joe wants to dominate every minute, every second of every workout, whether it's an individual thing or whether it's, you know, a team practice. Like, he is that person. I'm always late to Bo. So I always say, hey, dude, I'm waiting for you. Let's go. But. Waiting on me, backing up. But Bo knows we got to put on music. My interactions with Joe started just a few weeks after we, we opened the PI in 2017. Joe was one of the first athletes through the door. I think at that time, he was a little, a little bit of a crossroads. Um, he had just suffered an injury to his knee, um, was kind of working on making his way back up the rankings with the hopes of, of getting himself another title shot. And then this knee injury happened. He kind of got sat back like, man, I don't, I don't know what to do. I've heard people don't come back from these types of injuries, so a lot of doubt setting in. So I think for us to open the doors on this place, he walked into an avenue where he had a ton of resources to supply him with answers to some of those questions, start to paint some timelines on, this is what the recovery process looks like, this is what some of the long-term planning process can look like, here's how we can get you back into some fight training, some grappling, some striking. Um, and it started to paint a picture of hope, I believe, for him in the beginning, which kind of kept his fire going at a time where he was starting to get a little bit down about it. Um, and then through that process is when you know, people like myself, our head of physical therapy, pretty much all of our performance service staff here really got a chance to engage with him. You know, we knew about the legend of him. He, he's a tenured veteran. So um, through the WEC days and, and even it through the show and the UFC, um, you know, we know we're, we have an awareness, but then to really get in with him and be able to influence and affect his daily lifestyle, not only as an athlete, but some of the habits uh, around his health and well-being as, as just a person, um, that, that's where we were able to cultivate that, was through that rehab process coming back from that injury. We're gonna do these dynamics. I want you to go down, get a quick stretch, and then bounce right back up. Okay. So I'll start them up here vertical, okay. dig my feet in the back, okay. pull with the hamstrings. Okay. We're gonna do five. You have to be inspired by something going into every practice or every fight, but like the gratitude inspires me. Like if I can feel lucky, you know, for my life going into practice, then like I'm a lot less likely to squander that practice. I'm a lot more likely to try hard because I'm grateful for like what doing that has given me. And that is a constant, constant cycle. Like in fighting through years, through days, through practices, you have to look for inspiration. You know, sometimes the inspiration is as easy as, you know, oh, you know, had a bad childhood. I need to get out of this and get a house. You know, once you get that, you need something else. You need something else. I just try to find something every little day to like kind of be appreciative of going into practice. And then that drives me through practice and doing that you know, um, every single day, that leads to the consistency, you know, which leads to the results. 75 feet, 30 seconds of rest. We'll repeat, we're gonna do three in a row. And we'll take a one minute rest. Yes, sir. What did we do last time, 50? We did 50 feet, we did five per set. It took you like 10, 10 to 11 seconds. Yep. It took me 13. Get quick start. Ready, three. Two, one, 
Nope. So if you look at the level of engagement that we've had with Joe, that's that was a long-term process that started with some very minimal level engagement that got expounded upon as he saw some some success, but also learned how to utilize these services and fit it into his little microcosm of, of fight camp and fight preparation. Um, and there's a spectrum to how that gets delivered across our roster. Anywhere from a fighter, say, that lives here in Vegas full time, we see them frequently. They utilize this space to their liking, depending on what their interests are or what resources they already have at their disposal. Opposite end of the spectrum, say a fighter that lives um, in an Eastern Bloc country that we might see once a quarter or twice a year, um, and how we implement local services when they come in town and spend some time with us, and how we take our staff and just surround them so that we can provide them with as much information as possible, and then how we leverage that into more of a remote relationship later on to where we can supplement them with little bits of information as they see fit. So we're kind of built to be agile so that we can supply those services across that spectrum depending on what the initiatives are of the fighter. So we do get the question a lot like, oh, you know, this guy's here all the time. He's got to be one of your favorites. Um, on the personal side, absolutely. We, there's relationship um, cultivation that goes on here where it, the human side of you, I'm a coach, I'm empathetic. You know, you, you're going to have a human side that grows an attachment towards one. But it's the passion that you'll see as a commonality across our team here, the passion to want to be helpful to every person on our roster um, that is, un, it, for one, it's undescribable, but also um, it's apparent. You can you can see it, you can witness it firsthand. Whether it's a fighter we've never dealt with, it could be a rival fighter of someone that we deal with every day. Um, and the nice thing about it at this day, at this stage in the game, three years into us being open, the fighters understand how we deliver these services and they also understand how important that roster is to us. So when Joe Benavidez sees me across the floor and I've got Henry Saudo in here doing some work while he's in town, he's got his own ball of issues that he's trying to alleviate. There's a professional respect there because he understands, that, hey, Bo, Bo takes his job seriously. And right now his job is to make sure that that fighter has the best possible resources at his disposal. Vice versa, um, the same thing with Joe being a local here and people seeing how much time we spend with him. They also understand that it's his initiative to devote that much of his time in here in this facility. They see that, some aspire to it, like, wow, he's really taking advantage of every opportunity that he has here. And then others are like, you know what, I, I can take tidbits away from that, but that's not totally how I'll set my stuff up back at home. So there's some sharing, there's some information sharing that goes on. Um, but ultimately, I think the message is clear across the board. If you're on our roster and you're expected to perform well, we're going to try to provide you with every possible resource that we can based on your initiative um, to do just that, to be the, the, the most fight ready um, that you can be, to extend the longevity of your career, career as much as we can, and to help you aspire to your level, what, what, what you see to be your level of greatness in this, uh, in this profession, but also in this league. I love feeling the fatigue. But, Especially this time. but just ignoring it, yeah. I think it's just the best feeling ever. I think it's a great feeling to have this point in your camp when you can push like that and have the confidence of bouncing back three hours later yeah. and going to practice. I love it. Like it's either you versus you. Like I think some people are scared to get tired because like I'm going to get taken down. But here, you can't be scared of the feeling of being tired. And I try to, Bo obviously the best in the business. He helps me get there where you feel it because if you're, a experienced fighter, you can go through a fight at a pace. You want to feel what that tired feels like and know like you have to go again, you know, and then you can apply that, you know, supplementally into the, into the fight. Like, you know, you can scramble for 10 seconds, you know, hold. If you have to do it again, you do it again. So, you know, you have those bursts. But to me, feeling that feeling of tired is like huge because there's like tired, can't, and there's tired and can. And you always, you want to be tired. You're fighting, you want to exert yourself, but you got to know like you can. And the only way to do that is I think feeling it day in and day out and getting used to it where now, if I'm tired, like I know the fight started. 